Alright. G'day guys, Luke the Drifter here in the backyard and uh, the old Drift HQ backyard's changed a bit recently. I knocked this tree over the other day and uh, look at that, she's a um, hundred year old that one, but it had been dead for some time. And uh, beautiful old uh, red gum tree. Anyway, so I'm going to um, split a bit of that for firewood and make some chop boards, a few tables and benches and things like that. So anyway, I thought it'd be a good chance to do a video on the electric chainsaws. Uh, you know, that's becoming a big thing at the moment. I've had one for a little while, uh, which has been great. And we've just recently made this electric chainsaw bag specifically to fit a couple of the saws. So I thought I'd show you that. It's great to have everything in a bag. Okay, so that's it there. Uh, clear top. It's a little bit different to our regular chainsaw bags, specifically for these electric versions. Now, uh, so you can see that there, nice easy access to the whole bag. And this one here is the Husqvarna uh, 535. Okay, so this is I'm just on loan at the moment from the Gloucester mower shop, uh, chainsaw mower shop up the road. So good old Kenny's let me borrow that. And, uh, but as you can see, and it just fits in really nicely. Now this is an 800 mil saw. The bag is uh, 750, but it just bulges a tiny bit. The a bag can bulge a little bit, no worries. So the 750 mil bag fits it really nicely. Now we've got a few parts of the bag. So I've got a small pocket here for say a spare chain, just a small sleeve, and a, you know, file handle, and also a pocket here for your oil. Okay, so that fits in there, also your, uh, you know, your files. So that's in there. The second part here is this bag here. And that fits your charger. Now these chargers are quite expensive and they're important to keep them nice and clean. You know, chainsaw bags can get pretty filthy. So I've got a separate bag, as you can see. And that fits the battery in there. And it all fits nicely. Uh, now... This is the other thing you can get too. This doesn't come included. Uh, for the price on the website, you get the small bag and the big bag all together. The other thing I'm also doing, I'm gonna have attached some uh, straps up at the side here. This is my second prototype. So the third prototype's got uh, some D shackles on the side, plastic Ds, and it'll, it'll come with an optional shoulder strap. So if you think you need a shoulder strap, it'll come with the, uh, the plastic Ds and you just buy the shoulder strap and click it on. Another thing it doesn't come with, which is really handy, is a small uh, plastic uh, tray, drip tray. These are really good. You can see how nicely it fits in there. Okay, and that just goes over the top. So these are on their website, and it's a good idea to buy one of those. Even though it's electric saw, it's still got the oil, and they will, you know, they leak oil. So it's a good idea to get that. I'll give you an example. This is my uh, for a little 450. All right, look what's come out of the bottom of it. Okay, just that's been in there for some time, but that's just leaking petrol and oil, and that's what would be in the bottom of your bag. Otherwise, <clears throat> this is our original uh, fire pit. Uh, this is our original uh, chainsaw bag, and you can see it's had a fair bit of use. Uh, but the, you can see the style of the pocket uh, for all my gear in there. But uh, and you can see the few changes we've done to make it. A little better suited. To One sec. Uh. Okay, so yeah, it's quite a good little saw. This one. These are about 600 bucks, I think, uh, not including the battery. Uh, I haven't used these saws, but it's a little. I think it's a 14-inch blade bar on it, and uh, it's got the larger. I think they're the three-quarter teeth. I hope I'm right on that. They're the low three quarter teeth. They're much bigger teeth than the little steel that I've got. But I haven't used this saw. One thing I've noticed, this battery is uh, very light and it's only a two and a half hour battery. Two and a half amp hour battery. That's a two actually. A two amp hour battery which on the steel I'll show you is a seven, seven and a half. So uh, that's not going to last that long. But you can get bigger batteries for them. Um, so that's a little saw there fits nicely and I'll show you now the still that I'm that I've purchased and I've been using
just cut there too. that I've got and uh, I've been really happy with this saw again fits perfectly in the chainsaw tray so worth getting one of those that's an extra you can buy on our cart and that's the little saw there okay again a 14 inch bar good thing with this one it's got uh, automatically you know adjustment control here without having to use a, uh, a spanner all right so that's pretty handy, and um, it's got the smaller, smaller teeth though. Okay, I think they're the, the quarter teeth. So, although I tend to think that uh, if you had two bigger teeth, it's going to just bite in, and it's you know it might be a little bit too much for the saw. So, uh, now this battery is. Uh, 7.2 amp hours, it's, it feels like three, four times heavier than the other battery. And that's it there. So, you know, great little saw. That's the 200C. These are 700, uh, these are 800 mil long. Fits perfect in the, in the bag, which is 750 long. Again, it's exactly the same length as the other little saw. Uh, so, charges in there, fits in there nicely as well, as you can see. And keep that nice and clean. The other good thing with this, uh, most of the guys are getting this same sort of range. I've bought this uh, little blower here as well. Same battery. Uh, this charger as well is one is the high performance charger. So 15 minutes full charge. And I've done that a few times. It's a great charger. So 15 minutes, seven and a half amp hour battery. That's a really good product and this little hex trimmer as well has been awesome so that's a good thing with these sort of tools you know you get the one battery kit that does a few different tools and a mate of mine put me on these the other day and they've been this has been awesome i went to town with this and trimmed all the trees it's a great little tool so i think uh it's important to look at i've known, noticed a couple of those saws on the website had a bit of a look and they're a cheaper saw but you've got a, a much smaller battery much smaller capacity battery end of the day the power is in that battery okay so um, I think you've got to take that into account when you're looking at the price. The bag's also big enough to fit. Often I'll carry a Silky. Okay, so the Silky Katana Boy, yeah, that's a 650 Katana Boy, fits in the bag as well. And I can also fit my uh, Halter Force Axe in there also. I just sit him in that way like that. Okay, so you've got everything in there you need your axe, your silky, your saw, uh, all in there together. So now I, I wouldn't normally carry my silky and the axe in there. I've got them separate in the vehicle. But if you wanted to have everything in there, you can do that. Okay, they'll fit inside. Maybe put that there is better. Right, so that's a little kit. Uh, that's a chainsaw bag, and oh, the other thing, really handy to carry a couple of wedges. So, you know, maybe even just one short wedge fits in there too. Wedges are very important to carry. Um, well, I think that's it, Kato. Um, that's a little electric chainsaw bag, and uh, they're on the website, ready to go. Dimensions are on there, so if you've got a different type of saw, you know, just look at the dimensions of the bag. I don't know the dimensions of every single saw in the market, but the dimensions of this bag on the are on the website, if it fits in that size, well, it'll fit. Um, give or take a little bit, okay, because the bag will bulge about 50 mils. Well, I was wondering whether we should chop down a little tree. Uh, I've got a she oak there, about six, eight inches across, that's um, slightly leaning over the fence. I'm not sure. We might have a little go at it. I'll have a, I'll have a think. Let's have a look, Cotter.
So, yep. All right, so we're going to try and take out this little shioke here. Same with that round, which is going to be hard to wedge. I'm going to try and wedge it. But if I can't, I've just got a bit of a, I've got a 10 meter winch extension line tied to the top. Back over the tree over there, and if we need to, that'll stop it falling that way. Uh, we might be able to pull it over with Kaido as well, but we'll see how we go. We'll see what happens. I wanted to show you using it at least. Okay. You can see that there, full charge, pretty much a full charge battery. I'm going to knock this one here down, just back up, Cotty. Worst thing can happen here. This tree will fall back over the fence. Pretty heavy wood, this, but uh, we'll see. Do you want to scout the rope? Uh, just back, back up a little bit. Yeah, it's coming, it's coming, it's coming. Yep. Alright. Yeah, it's leaning the right way now. Yeah, Perfect. That's a nice bit of firewood too, actually. Beautiful. Yeah, right, nice and dry. This um, that blade's not real sharp. I've been using it for a while, but anyway, come down pretty good. I just nicked the uh, aluminium wedge, but that's why they're aluminium, you know. That's the reason they're aluminium, it doesn't hurt it too much. This is a short, deep wedge, that's why I use that one. 
Hur mår du? Nog vill vi då. Vi ser här vi säger. Den här där är ju superhörd. Tjej. Oh, oh. Den där. Då har vi haft till... Ja, jag skulle ha dödat blockbuster. Very hard with that. So Alright, so you can see for the type of job we're doing, cutting up smaller trees, this saw is perfect and uh, yeah, it's a great little saw. It's only, you know, it's not as powerful as a pet petrol saw. And you can see it bind up a little bit, so you've got to be a little bit gentle on them. But, um, you know, I mean, they're small and light, they've got no petrol smell in your vehicle, so people have been asking what it's like for camping and for driving, it's perfect really. Uh, because small light, no petrol. Cut a couple more little things up here, you can see how it performs. Gone down a little bit in the battery, and uh, it's important you know that fast charge is going to be really good to bring that back up. Now, you know, that's it. Great little saw. You can, you know, some people are going to say, you know, it's crazy not wearing chaps, too. You know, so list if you want to wear chaps, wear chaps. You know, I'm not a chainsaw safety advisor, I don't wear chaps. And if you want to wear chaps, then you can, you know, I always wear uh, hearing protection. When I'm using electric, uh, a, a, a petrol saw for sure, I always do that. Mostly always wear glasses. And if I'm dropping a tree with branches, I always wear a helmet. You know, so I'm very safety conscious, but chaps I'm not going to worry about. All right, cool little saw. Cut one more. So, great little saw, perfect for camping, very light and quiet as well. So if you're stealth camping, you know, you want to chop a little bit of firewood in the state forest with no one sees you, this is what you want to be using. So, and I think there's going to be minimal, you know, maintenance as well. You know, you carry a spare uh, chain, bar oil, and it's really all you need. 
you know, um, with normal, you know, um, chainsaws, petrol chainsaws, you really need to get it serviced once a year, change the plug, you know, if you don't use it for a while, it just gums up and you've got the choke problem, so it's pretty maintenance free as well. Anyway, main thing was to show you a little bit about the saw, I suppose, and the bag that we've got. goes in there nicely. It's a good idea to click that battery out because whatever that's in there, that'll ready to run, you know. Right. Battery can go in here. Really nice package. Keep your, you know, your saw well protected, ready to go. All right. Thanks, guys. Uh. Yeah, guys. Another, just another quick thing as well about safety because people go on about it a lot these days. You know, take your seatbelt off when you're doing 5k an hour, first gear, low range down a four-wheel drive track, and people get upset and stuff like that. And, you know, I'm sure there's going to be people saying, oh, you know, you haven't wearing chaps, you know, but at the end of the day, your safety is your own responsibility. And uh, there's this thing in the world called uh, being careful and learning to be careful. So it's very important to teach your kids to be careful and to learn what that means rather than just expecting, you know, a pair of chaps or a seatbelt or whatever is going to look after you and that you don't have to be careful. So, you know, I've, you Particularly been in Thailand a lot lately, and um, the last 12 months, you see, you know, you see kids there all the time, eight, ten years old, driving down the main road, no helmet, and you know, I've been watching them closely, and you know what? They're all really careful, responsible, and careful, and that's what we sort of lost here. And you know, uh, everyone, everyone can wear whatever safety gear they like. I'm, I tend to be a little bit against the, um, the, you know, the overbearing oppression almost, which is the safety you know, uh, what's come into Australia, which really has made it difficult for a lot of us to get work done. And, um, but the thing is, it's just about being careful. You know, I mean, I've ridden all over North Queensland in the back of uh, stock trucks, you know, standing in there with a bunch of horses. That's how cowboys get around up north and in America as well. You know, we'd have to go up to the tracks and we'd sit in the back of a, stand in the back of a horse, of, of a horse truck, 20 horses in there, you know, it's just about being careful and um, taking what risks you think is suitable for yourself, you know. But the main point is learning to be careful and if you just forget about your own personal safety and just look at the safety uh, PPE and all that sort of stuff, you won't understand about being careful yourself. And it's really important to learn to be careful and teach your kids to be careful what's responsible, what's not responsible, and that's far better for yourself than, you know, any idiot can put all the safety people you get on you like and be Mr. Husqvarna man and have no idea what he's doing, you know. You can be sore and flick back, hitch in the shoulder or in the head, all sorts of things, you know. So it's about being careful yourself, learning to be careful, teaching your kids how to be careful. Like a good example too, I got, you know, being out camping with kids and I've given Kaido an axe when he's like, I don't know, six or seven years old, a little axe, and I showed him how to use it. Right, he's seven, eight years old, you know. Well, I've had friends who've got kids older, you know, maybe ten years old, and say, oh, I'm not, never, I won't let my kid use an axe because it's dangerous. Well, yeah, maybe it is dangerous. But if you teach them how to use the axe properly, then they will know how to use it, and then they can be careful. And uh, that's, I think, more important, to give your kids a bit of a go at things. Don't think that they've got to be 18 before they try something. Give them a bit of a go. You know, Kaido didn't have chaps and steel cap boots on and a helmet when he started, you know, chopping little trees down with an axe. You know, you don't need that. You just got to teach them how to be careful. And if they're too stupid and hurt themselves, well, then they're going to learn as well, you know. But you're better off giving them a bit of a go. Learn to be careful rather than going overboard with overbearing, you know, work cover safety issues. It just really suppresses what we can and can't do in the country and takes enormously away from our productivity as well, which is a point that's... Um, I see every day, you know, in business. So, anyway, get up and arms about no chaps if you want, but that's my opinion of it. It's just 
not needed for what I want to do and um, I'd rather you know understand what I'm doing and be careful myself rather than going overboard with safety equipment. Righto, no worries. <clears throat> look at it. Oh, look at the top of it. The top just moves heaps. <clears throat> Look at it. There it goes.